Did you know? 2022 marks 10 years since the Intel NUC was first released, and Intel is celebrating in style. First, by killing off the consumer line. Next, by releasing NUC 12 Pro over 4 months late. Not including a power cable to go with it, and not having any units available for review. And the Intel driver assistant still doesn't find all the drivers your NUC needs to this day. Congratulations on turning 10! I'd celebrate with a fancy cake and everything, but I already spent a thousand Aussie pesos on this NUC bare bones. So yeah, we're doing an El Cheapo party instead. NUC 12 Pro is codenamed Wall Street Canyon, and this slim i7 model features the i7-1260p, a 12-core CPU. Yep, a tripling in cores over last year's effort. NUC 12 still uses DDR4 soda memory. Four months ago, I'd say this was the right choice, but now DDR5 soda memory is much cheaper and almost at DDR4 sodium levels, so I'm not convinced. In the box, there's a 120 watt power supply, which is still larger than third party options, but no power cable to go with it, because for $1,000, f me, right? At least the store I bought it from provided it free of charge. Imagine buying this and not being able to use it because Intel was too stingy to include a power cord. Oh, there's also a monitor mount and screws. The Intel NUC build quality you know and love returns. Although I have to say this design is very tired and needs a good refresh. On the front, you've got dual USB 3.2 ports. A welcome addition is the audio jack which has been missing from the Pro line previously. On the rear, you've got two Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports, which are now called USB 4, and should be hitting all high-end minis soon. There's another USB 3.2 and a USB 2. All the USB 3.2 ports are 10 gigabit. This NUC supports four displays. The USB 4 ports feature DisplayPort 1.4, and you've got dual HDMI 2.0B for the rest. No SD card reader on this model, and the lack of USB-C power delivery is glaring, but understandable since at the moment it maxes out at 100 watts, and that's just not enough for this mini. Lately I received a comment that NUC 11 has an issue with the Thunderbolt ports when used together with an external NVMe drive. So I got an external NVMe, ran the test on this unit, and it passed without issue. Opening up the slim reveals an M.2 PCIe Gen 4 slot for storage, as well as an M.2 2242 SATA slot. Finding that type of drive is not so easy. The tall model adds a 2.5 inch SATA slot for extra storage. I started by testing Ubuntu and everything worked fine apart from the audio. Today we're unboxing the NUC 12 Pro. Once again, Intel is not included. Yeah. I don't quite sound like that. Must be an audio driver issue there. Chrome OS Flex didn't even manage to boot and was stuck at the initial logo. I think it's driver issues again. As of this video, the latest build of Windows 11 doesn't have a bunch of drivers for NUC 12 Pro, so make sure to download them beforehand, as you won't have internet access. Okay, let's look at the performance test. I like to compare devices of similar size and CPU spec if possible. So I've chosen last year's i7 NUC 11 and this year's Mini's Forum UM560 for comparisons. The UM580 would be a better one to compare, but it's still not available. The UM560 is a great Ryzen based mini PC at about half the price, so take that into account. Okay, in single core Cinebench, NUC 12 Pro comes out way ahead, almost hitting the 700 mark. That's over 21% compared to NUC 11. The multi-core gets an even bigger boost, with over 63% better score. I believe this is the biggest year-on-year -year CPU performance leap in NUC's 10-year history. If we put that performance to the test in coding a video, again, there's a 64% increase between NUC 11 and 12. With graphics performance, I wasn't expecting much, but there's a modest improvement in 3D Mark at least, 9% in DX11, and 12% in DX12. Let's see if there's a real world improvement. First up, Forza Horizon 5. NUC 12 Pro's frame rate is definitely better, but a small gain. 
a few percent at best. In Hades, there looks to be a bigger increase. Doom Eternal also sees around 10% gains, which is enough butting heads with the UM560. Valorant is a difficult title to compare, but overall frame rate looks to be higher on NUC 12. And with God of War, you see an extra frame per second or so. It's nothing substantial. We need a 60% improvement in graphics, but that's not going to happen. Anyway, as a bonus, I tried out the newly released Marvel Spider-Man. I never expected it to run this poorly. At these minimum settings, it looks and runs like garbage. The new i7 NUC has so much CPU power, it handles most emulators with ease. Well, as long as its graphics performance doesn't hold it back. Gran Turismo 4 is one of the most difficult PS2 games to emulate. And while it does hold 60 FPS a lot of the time, there are the odd drops thanks to the iGPU. Other than that, most PS2 games run perfectly. Rogue Squadron is another difficult to emulate game on GameCube, and it runs really well. The majority of the GameCube and Wii library should run great on this box. I tried a few Wii U games, and they all ran full speed. Breath of the Wild runs better than on other minis I've tried, but still doesn't hit 60 FPS. PS3 is a mixed bag. If the game runs without crashing or visual glitches, you can get good results. Most games won't work properly with Vulcan, and others don't work with OpenGL, so it's a lot of trial and error. I blame the graphics drivers. Anyway, here are some of the better results I had. Pretty cool when it does work. Idle power draw is slightly up. Max power draw is up by 10 watts. All that extra performance doesn't come for free. Max CPU temp was exactly the same as last year's unit, but thermal and power throttling was recorded during benchmarking, so this unit can't peak perform consistently under load. Using the NUC for the last couple of days, I could swear it was identical in fan noise as last year's NUC 11, but I tested it and it's better. The i7 NUC 12 Pro has had some major improvements in CPU performance. You don't see these kind of gains often. But it's not all perfect in NUC Pro land. Price is obviously not its friend, with around a 15% price increase from the previous consumer i7 NUCs. Graphics performance improvement is uh, modest. Yeah, modest at best. I've reviewed a whole heap of minis this year, and some, like the Mini Sforum UM560, have got the cooling and fan noise under control much better, with a USB power delivery and a small GAN power supply. Yeah, it uses less power, and the build quality and warranty don't really compare, but that brings me to... Why does the NUC need to look the same year after year? Intel need to redesign it, make it a bit bigger, and use something like this to cool it. It would keep temps down, performance up, and stay quiet. 
I would know. I used it with a Ryzen 5600G in the Disk Mini for over a year. Excellent cooler. But yes, massive CPU gains in both single and multi-core made this i7 NUC a joy to use. And there is no reason to buy a NUC 11 Pro unless it's cheaper. Substantially cheaper. My other issue is that NUCs have always been about using bleeding edge tech, and this unit still uses DDR4 memory, which limits memory bandwidth and probably iGPU performance. I guess that'll come next year, if NUC 13 Pro isn't cancelled. Ultimately, the i7 NUC 12 Pro is a good unit, but it could have been a great one. With the bare bones at $1000 Aussie, I expect, no. I demand it. Also, not including a power cable is completely unacceptable. Stay tuned for the i5 NUC 12 Pro review, which is being loaned to me by Raytan. Thanks for helping me source it. But in the meantime, I really think you should check out the Minis Forum UM560 as it's a really good mini PC for the dollars. Cheers!